So this is my response to England's draw with Slovenia, which saw it's even top of the group. Uh, a war of attrition group, a poor group, a group without many goals, but nonetheless a group that English England finished top of. And what England's players, coaching staff could say is, we can't finish any higher than that. We did what was needed when it was in front of us. It was a bit better than Denmark. A couple of days ago, Declan Rice did an interview with Gabriel Clark. First of all, Declan Rice is an impressive character. Really like him. Considered, to the point, real. Doesn't just come out with footballer talk. Seems in touch with the real world. Doesn't let himself be taken down avenues by the person that's asking the questions. Intelligent lad. I've always thought I would love him at United. Um, an all-round good, good egg, I think. And he was good. The interview was good. And he said in the interview, um, what you're going to see from England is we're going to be on the front foot, we're going to press more aggressively, we're going to be more positive, we're going to have a real good go. And for the first 10 minutes last night, we did. And in that 10 minutes, we looked incredibly vulnerable. And Slovenia had some really dangerous attacks. And when that happened, England retreated and basically just tried to play keep ball for the rest of the half. Not very well. Kept giving the ball away, loads of unforced errors for the rest of that first half. But the interesting thing is they retreated because when they tried to do what everyone wants from them, which is to press, we couldn't do it whilst keeping a compact defence. Now, who do you look at in terms of responsibility there? Because I think with the level of players England have got, they should know how to execute a decent press whilst keeping it relatively tight at the back. Is that on the manager? I don't know. Like, for example, Argentina won the World Cup. I bet you can't even name Argentina's manager without looking him up. Is he a tactical genius? Did he did did they win it because of him? No, they won it because of the players. And I bet you any money the players went out and just thought he, he's leading us, he's kind of like overseeing things, but we go out and we do what we need to do. And this England team doesn't have the character to do that. Because it's pretty poor when you you can't you can't press without looking incredibly vulnerable at the back. The one spark in the first half was, was Foden and um, a brilliant bit of football when we scored and it got disallowed. I hoped that would be a catalyst for, for an improved performance. It wasn't, unfortunately. Half-time, Menu comes on. What he brings to you is you give him a ball in a tight space, he's not bothered, it's fine. He can work in tight spaces, he can play in intricate passing movements, if he gives the ball away he'll go and win it back really quickly he's got to start the next game Foden again continued to try and take it to, to um, Slovenia I thought he was he was really good last night, he was you know again I speak about working in tight spaces he gets the ball and he turns and within a couple of strides he seems to have taken three or four defenders out of the game he's the one He's the one that could do something, could, could unlock a defence, could just make something happen because he's so good. And I thought his intent was good last night. Kane was decent. Kane kept coming deep, as, as I've said he does. But when he did, he held the ball up well. He worked really hard for the team. He, he made some great passes and he also intended to make other great passes, which just didn't quite come off. But again, his intent was very positive. I don't think you can really knock Kane last night. He was, he was decent. And in the second half, we kept the ball better. We moved it about, but it was always in front of the Slovenian defence. It was, it was so easy to defend against, I would say. Not easy, that's probably not fair, but predictable to, to defend against. I watched, two, I watched Man United for two years under Louis van Gaal, and I watched mind-numbingly boring football, where it was pass, 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 and it was all it was was passing, with no intent, not going anywhere with it, just boring. And of of the what would you call them the hipster football tacticians would say uh, oh well what he's doing trying to do is recreate what he had at Bayern Munich where it was pass 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 and then when you get in the final third the team explodes and basically it's, everyone stays disciplined and then in the final third those players can go and express themselves well at Bayern Munich he had Ian Robin and Frank Ribery and England last night reminded me of Man United under Louis Van Gaal where they're doing the pass 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 bit. But there's no explosive players in the final third to go and make something happen. 
as I said before a million times, Kane's coming deep, no problem with that, that's his game. But you've, you've got to have direct runners in and around him. You've got to have an option for people to turn defences so you can play a long ball if you need to. Not that they were giving us a lot of space in behind, so I understand that. Or, if you're pass, 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 passing, you need direct wingers who are just going to say, right, we've passed it now, give me the ball and I'm going to go and make something happen. Anthony Gordon, the minute he came on the pitch, did that. My criticism of Southgate is how long it takes him to make decisions within games. Gordon was warming up, I'd say quite um, proactively and positively, like he was going to come on at some point soon, at half-time. And he came on in the 88th minute. What are you going to do in the 88th minute? Well, actually, he was brilliant in the two, three minutes he was on the pitch. But what? how ridiculous. In a game against bloody Slovenia, come on. If ever there's a free hit, like the commentators were saying, if, the, if ever there's a time when you can just let the, let the shackles off ever so slightly, it's bloody Slovenia when you've already qualified. And we need a kick. We need a kick on. We need something. We need a spark. We need something to get us going. What did he do as soon as he came on the pitch? He, okay, he ran the ball out of play, but he, he's running directly at someone. And the next time he got the ball, he came deep and got the ball. That pass that he put through was just absolutely... In, it was an incision right through the heart of the Slovenian team. What a pass. And I think then it was Kane and then it, it, it Palmer, and Palmer's finish wasn't great. But that's from someone getting the ball, tiring legs around him in terms of the opposition, and bang, there it is. So last night, by design or otherwise, I'm not sure... Foden in the second half came and pretty much played in the centre and Bellingham was out on the left wing. Bellingham's knackered. He was a complete passenger. He was doing nothing in the game. Just bring him off and bring Gordon on. He didn't even bring him off when he brought Gordon on. He brought bloody Foden off, who looked like the only player who could... Well, not the only player, one of the players that could do something. What's with it? Just bring him up. Bring Bellingham off. It's not like the headlines would be he's hauled Bellingham off. Bring him off with half an hour to go. And frame it that you're giving him a rest for the weekend. If you want, he's 20 years old. He's goosed. And the balance of the team would have been so much better with Gordon. And as I say, with that direct runner. A proper winger who's going to go and directly run at people. And then Kane maybe does find some space in the box because he's got a runner as well. It's, there's so many benefits for putting Gordon into the team. And I don't think it's a particularly risky move because he's very good coming back the other way. There's nothing in it between Palmer and Saka for me. I've got no problem with Saka, but... Palmer again came on, I think he probably could have come on a bit earlier, but again, just think about that example where the ball came over, the ball's, he's, he's took it out of the air, he's not even really, his, his control was, his, his, his first touch, he kicked it over the defender's head and the defender's had to obstruct him. A technically gifted player who's prepared to run at players. We're playing Slovenia, we're through already. And you pick the same team apart from putting Gallagher in midfield. And then you keep it pretty much the same other than bringing main one for him until the last knockings of the game. There's, I think there's something that Southgate, there's a weakness in this team that he knows about which he's trying to protect. And we as, as laymen, as football fans, as punters, we, won't, we, don't, we don't know what that is. Because it doesn't make any sense what, what he's doing. I don't see any risk in putting Gordon on earlier than he did at all. And we need a spark. That song the England fans sing for Foden, um, you can't start a fire without a spark. Never has a song been so apt for a team. Not Foden, he's trying to be the spark. But you can't start a fire without a spark. Where's the spark? Something needs to ignite. It's not happening. It's not about we finished top of the group with five points, so therefore it's job done. You're running out of chances. It's always the next game. The next game, we're going to show you this. The next game, we're going to show you that. Well, if we don't do very well in the next game, we're out. People are getting excited about the side of draw, the draw we're on. I'm not. Did you hear Kane after the game? Straight after the game, he said, um, job done. We came here to get out of the group. We've done that. Um, and we know what tournaments are like. In the next round, it could be extra time and penalties. The way he said it, indicated to me that's what they're expecting that's their expectation that's their hopes that's their almost their goal that that's what we're trying to achieve we're going to stodge our way through the tournament and by hook or by crook win by the odd goal or win on penalties England don't win on penalties and the player's going to be absolutely knackered if they have to play extra time because he's not changing the team and nor is he brave enough to change, change the team as I said before the tournament 
there's so many adaptations you can make if you're brave enough to bring Palmer on and put Foden a little bit deeper or bring Gordon on and put someone else in a different position. He's not prepared to do that. So it'll just be the same team. You're not going any further in the tournament, in my opinion, England. I think that's it. I think, I think we'll get knocked out of the weekend, whoever we play. We, as it stands, we've got Holland. Holland are a technically better team than England. They shouldn't be, but they are. In terms of the whole setup, the coaching staff, the players they've got, the way they play, they're better than England, in this, for me, anyway, that, that, in, in my opinion. If you, if you start looking through the Holland team, and I don't know it intricately, I have to say, but I bet you'll find yourself going, oh yeah, I forgot about him. Oh yeah, he's a good player. Oh shit, is he, is he played for Holland? Oh yeah. And they're always technically good. And just England just aren't, aren't all that. That's the, that's the biggest problem. And if we end up getting... So I think the other options we've got are if the Czech Republic beat Turkey or Georgia beat Portugal, neither of which are likely to happen. We could get those, one of those, I think. So if we get the Czech Republic, you just get a repeat of last night. Complete war of attrition. Pass, 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 and that's it. In front of the Czech Republic defence, they'll sit there all day going, cool, you keep doing that, lads. Piece of piss. And we'll go to extra time penalties and they'll probably beat us on penalties. So you can go on forever more about, oh, the side of the draw is favourable. Not if you're playing like England are playing, it's not. No side of the draw is favourable. I'd rather, do you know, to some degree, I'd probably almost, this is sound crazy, I'd rather play Germany or France, but we're going to get knocked out anyway. But I think it might just ignite something in them. You could say Holland will be a more open game and that might suit England because we can we'll have a bit more space, we can counter-attack. Serbia attacked us for the whole of the second half in the first game and we didn't counter-attack once. There's no intent to counter-attack. There's no one making any bloody runs. There's no direct players in the team. So counter-attacking football would be a dream, potentially, because of the space that would be there. So I'm a bit like... What is this that we're trying to achieve here? The only thing I can see is that he's protecting weaknesses by keeping the ball. I'm not seeing that final third dynamism. I'm not seeing players running behind. I'm not seeing us trying to attack teams, which I didn't really expect anyway. But I'm, we're not counter-attacking either when we're under the cosh. Like against like we're under the cosh against Denmark, actually. But we're sitting so deep, there's no counter-attacking threat. So what are we as a team? I say this about United quite a bit. I think England are a moments team. They're a team that have kept relatively compact over a number of tournaments with pretty functional football. And then they've relied on a decent move, a decent piece of, piece of play that's ended up getting us a goal. Only in this tournament that's not happening. And he's, and he's not brave enough to pick the players that need to be picked in order for that to happen. So unfortunately, I, I think we're going out in the next round. I said that last week. I don't want to be right, but I don't think we'll get to the quarterfinals. And I think last night was a huge opportunity, an open goal opportunity to go in and have a go at a team, play well, score a few goals, get everyone up. I don't get that impression. I don't think anyone's up. I think it's it was actually quite a damaging night potentially for England. Interesting. Just looking at the human side of it, Southgate. Uh, don't, I don't. I don't particularly listen to Southgate. Even when we were doing well, I didn't really listen to his interviews because I find him. He gives very, very. Um, what's the word? Predictable answers to questions when he's in press conferences, and, and he never really gives you. I don't think a true sense of himself or the team or whatever. And bear in mind, I've always stuck up for Southgate. I think his achievements over the time that he's been England manager have been worthy of note, without a doubt. Um, but last night I just saw a little snippet uh, on Twitter where there was a, a, a few moments of things that he said in an interview with Five Live and you know the, the guy said, you went over and made a point of, of applauding the fans and he said, I, I know they're not happy with me at the moment but I need them to get behind my team. I thought, that's good. You know, you're taking responsibility and the, and the England fans were very good last night. They were very loud. They did stick by the team. And it's good that he recognises, at least, that no one's no one's happy at the moment. Um, but as I said the other day, there's something not right in the camp. It's, 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 I think it's done, unfortunately, for Southgate. And last night has, has not 
given me any confidence moving forward. I'm going to end the video as I, I have been doing, just more out of superstition because we've ended up going through when I've done it and um, I'm, I am superstitious when it comes to England and I have it more than anything else. Do I believe what I'm going to say? Probably not, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> it's coming home.